Hello. Welcome to my video sample for my presentation on the topic of careers for young professionals. This is a career development presentation, one of my career development, professional development series presentations that is specific to people who have either just graduated or have uh, or are about to graduate from an academic institution and enter the professional workforce. And so for my example today, I'm going to give two major topics is going to be transitioning from an academic environment where I'm going to contrast some of the differences between your experiences in a, an academic institution versus the, the working world, the real world as it's stated. And then the other one is just going to be a bunch of issues that I think are specific to young or new professionals. I think this presentation is particularly well suited to, uh, for example, university students or high school students about to graduate. Also, it's well suited to new higher orientations for, um, for people who've, who've recently graduated. So with that in mind, let's get started. I think the most important message when you transition from an academic institution to the workforce is to remember the system, the organization, the business no longer exists for you. One of the unusual things about uh, your life up until graduation is that most of the institutions, most of the uh, organizations you've been a part of were designed for your development. Your, your parents, your family, and also your academic institution. And there's a big mindset change. Now you are there to serve the system. And so there, I'll give you a couple of examples of, of how that affects, uh, how that changes uh, your your. Um, how that changes your life and how you need to change your mindset. One of them is you used to be rewarded in an academic institution for your own benefits. You've become smarter, you've learned something, and now that is switched. Now you will be rewarded based on your contribution to another organization. Um, also, you'll notice that organizations are a lot less tolerant of, of exceptions or adjusting how they do business for your benefit. Now it will be more about you adjusting your, uh, your work style for the organization's benefit. Um, another thing to remember is that the skills required are now going to be different. Um, learning to study, uh, book smarts, learning to pass tests and exams will now be uh, uh, very different uh, will, will be relevant but not, sp not the only thing you need to learn. You almost need to learn new skills and also understand that that's going to be relatively less weighted. Some of the new skills will require uh, more people skills. You'll have to be working with other people a lot more on teams. You'll have to be selling your own work. The assignments you receive will oftentimes be more um, ambiguous. There's, they call them the nebulous assignments to sort of uh, sometimes just evaluative to see what you can do with it with uh, an open ended assignment rather than, you know, we're going to have a test on this day and we're going to study this. There's no, there's no syllabus for work necessarily. Also, you'll notice that because the skills are different, um, the people who you see rise to the top might have a different skill set. And oftentimes that's difficult for, uh, and, and so for example, I'm on the board of, uh, of um, the advisory board for my undergraduate engineering school. And one of the things the, the department had said was, you know, it's hard to tell at graduation who's gonna be successful. I know who the best students were, but that, that doesn't always translate into success in, in the real world. Sometimes these other skills uh, become more weighted and people you didn't know had them end up rising faster than some of your academic stars. There's also a theory that says sometimes the, the people who have the greatest difficulty making this transition are the best students because they're used to being the best and the brightest and uh, sometimes getting special treatment. And now uh, they, they, it requires a certain level of humility and recognition that that's no longer all that matters. Um, and as a matter of fact, some people will even say they, that you should hire B students because A students are so wonkish and academically oriented, very book smart, but they, they don't, almost don't have the humility to develop these other skills. They might not have them, but they also don't expect to need them. They've sort of been relying on their academics for so long. Another thing to bear in mind is that the time horizons can be different. In an academic environment, things tend to change on a semester or quarterly basis, and that's usually just months. And oftentimes, you know, a, a career is a lot longer than, an, uh, uh, your, will generally be longer than your education life. And sometimes time horizons that used to be in months will now be uh, in years. So rather than figuring out where you want to be next semester or next year, you want to think about where you want to be five years from now. And likewise, as the years can become five to ten year periods, uh, what, what used to be done in a few years will now take ten years to get you where you want to be. Also, 
people will rise at different rates. Um, when you're in an academic institution, I, we probably all know some dropouts, but it's also important to note that those who stay tend to advance at the same level. Everybody goes to the next grade on the next year, and now that's gonna change. Some people are gonna rise to the top faster. Some people are going to rise at the average speed. Some people might not rise at all. And also, you know, much like dropout, some people might be pushed out of an organization if they're not making uh, enough of a contribution. Uh, one of the most humbling experiences you can have when people rise at different rates is to, in fact, be passed over. When someone younger than you, uh, a more junior person, actually gets promoted ahead of you because they have demonstrated more capability. So you're gonna see more of that and you need to expect that. In terms of uh, performance criteria, they also change. We've, also, we've already talked a little bit about academics versus real world and, and the skills, but it's also the criteria. This is not, it's not about cramming for tests anymore. This is a, a daily behavioral evaluation. When they give you your evaluation, they're gonna ask people what it's like to work with you and uh, what the quality of your work is over a much longer period of time. We've also talked about time horizons. That, that qu qu goes for work horizons as well. You, you might get a multi-year assignment in a job. You rarely get a multi-year assignment in an academic institution unless you're doing a thesis. Um, also, the criteria generally become less objective. The, the, you, you don't do a paper or do a test. Now it's, uh, it's more up to perception. And unfortunately, that can make it more political. There are certain people you might come into contact with in your career. They're very good at uh, taking credit for things, whether it was their idea or not, and avoid bla avoiding blame for things, whether it was their fault or not. Uh, my, my advice to you as a young professional is to avoid engaging in that for a couple of reasons. One of them is you're, uh, you're probably not very good at it and, and uh, you're, you're going to be dealing with people who have a lot more experience in it and so your attempts will be uh, oftentimes rather obvious and uh, then they will give you a, an, a reputation for uh, lack of substance. So my advice to you for the first few years at least is to uh, observe and report and uh, uh, learn learn how your organization works rather than uh, try, and, try and engage in any political games. And the last one is there are a lot of cultural differences when you go from an academic environment to a, a professional environment. Uh, on university campuses especially, oftentimes it's very chic to be independent and go your own way and create your own path. And business uh, in particular can oftentimes put a greater weight on people who fit in and conform. And uh, that's, that's not something that students like to hear so much, but it is something you should consider. Not all organizations are that way, but many, many are. Um, and also, in, uh, in the university environment, it's oftentimes chic to be the contrarian and to challenge authority and organize protests. You will find that considerably less appreciated in the working world, especially uh, among uh, business organizations. So those are some specific things on the transition to academics. Now let's just talk about some, some uh, generalities, a bit of a laundry list of things to bear in mind. Um, one of them is, uh, I, I, my theory is, we tend to perceive time as a percentage of our lives. So if you're 21, five year, a five year period looks like uh, a, a long period of time because it's basically a quarter of your life so far. Whereas if you're 65, uh, a five year period seems considerably less. Now, interestingly, that, that's almost the opposite of what you'd prefer it to be. So for example, if you are, because what that does is that tends to create a scenario where young people underinvest in their own personal development and career development. So for example, if you're graduating with an undergraduate degree and you're considering whether you want to go for an advanced degree, master's or PhD, oh, it's PhD, that's several years more school, several years of, uh, uh, of, of training and, and a thesis and all that, that can seem large because it's a big percentage of your life. But what we'd really prefer is that we perceived as a percentage of life remaining. Because then, five years, if you have a, a, a 40 year career ahead of you, five years is a reasonable amount of time because you're gonna have more time to take advantage of that investment. So, so bear that in mind as you make some of your career decisions. The earlier on you are in your career, uh, you'll probably think time is, is longer when in fact it's actually shorter for what remains. Also, you, uh, one of the common mistakes you can make as a young person, if you get your first job in the, in the real world, the professional world, it's easy to assume that all of the world works like that job. 
and, and, and that culture, that one organization or that one industry represents the business world or the real world. And that's not necessarily the case. And it's important to bear in mind that along several areas like integrity, if you unfortunately end up going to work for a rather shady boss or a shady organization, um, don't assume that everywhere else in the world works along that same line. Uh, corporate culture, uh, work-life balance, you know, if this is a real grindhouse, don't assume that every job you'll ever have will be that way, um, and vice versa. And also in terms of who develops their people, and also pay, you know, sometimes the, we, the pay scale should be done on a rational market, a labor market basis, uh, according to the efficient market theory, but it really doesn't work that way. Pay can be very different based on companies and, and benefits as well, and, and opportunities. Another a uh, similar point is that we tend to, when you're young, you tend to believe whoever you spoke to last. And this isn't just young, this could be, you know, a seasoned professional, but moving into a new industry or a new company, you start to believe whoever you spoke to last. So the first person tells you, well, the things that we do here are uh, work according to A, B, and C. And then the next person you talk to will go, well, no, I understand A, B, and C, but X, Y, Z is really how it works for these reasons. And because you don't have the breadth of experience, you haven't seen all of, uh, uh, of the factors, you end up in a sort of he said, she said, and you believe whoever you spoke to last. Um, there's not a lot you can do about that other than to just be aware of it. Don't assume that because you've heard a narrative that made sense from the last person, that, will be, that is the way things are um, and that is, that is the school of thought you should subscribe to. Um, be open-minded, especially when you're new to an area. Uh, another common mistake that I see young professionals make is they oftentimes take cues from people who are stuck in their careers. When you enter an organization as a young professional, you're usually entering at a relatively junior level. It's an entry level job. And oftentimes there are people who've been there for many years and who haven't been promoted out of that for, for whatever reason. And they might be a bit cynical. And it's easy to sort of adopt their attitudes because you're, you are uh, among them on a daily basis. But it's important to remember t that if they're stuck, they're not really the role models that you want to take your cues from. You would, you would prefer to find uh, mentors and advisors and uh, take your cues from the people who have actually advanced. Um, and uh, th that, will be, that, that will help you develop your sensibilities better. Also, I wanna talk about the, uh, what I call the curse of plentiful options. When you're young and you're new, you have many, many options at your disposal and oftentimes it's overwhelming the options. And uh, that, that is not necessarily a problem. Uh, as you get older, you'll actually find that to be a benefit, but it can be overwhelming. You don't necessarily know what to do with your life. So my solution to that is sort of the next point, and that is just, just start somewhere. Take a first step. Most people will not know what they want to do with the rest of their life based on their first, their first job won't necessarily be what they want to do for the rest of their life. That's possible and it happens, but that's unusual. That's the exception. So don't expect that. So what you want to do is you want to start somewhere and figure out what you like about it and what you don't like. And then you find something that emphasizes a little bit more what you like. And then you're going to have a few more things there that you like and don't like. And you've learned a new thing. And, and you sort of want to take a series of steps to find out what kind of a career you really want to have, what the, what the job that you ultimately want to end up with, what your objectives are. So that's a, a, a general overview of some of the advice specific to young professionals. I do put some of my career management uh, general advice in this presentation, but the, I wanted to show, uh, to show the contrast, give you some, some points that are specific to my young professionals presentation. So if you've enjoyed this, I hope you've learned something. Uh, I hope you feel it's beneficial. And if you'd like to have it presented, please contact me at keithwhite.com for a proposal. I look forward to doing business with you. Thank you.